2019 is all about loose goals. That sounds awful, doesn't it? <laughs> My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and you have found me here on my YouTube channel. Um, previously, I have recorded Vlogmas episodes, so this is the first like real episode of something that I'm putting on my channel. So thank you so much for coming to watch my special episode, 2018 Year in Review. I am going to talk about my projects from 2018. I'm going to go over some of my favorite things that I made. Um, I'm also going to talk about um, 2018 goals. Did I meet them? Did I not meet them? And then also 2019 goals. So I am so excited to get started. You can see I have a dog right here that may be pittering around and my husband's upstairs on his computer. So you may hear some background noise, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So today is, let's see, Saturday, December 29th. So it's not quite the end of the year yet. So I can still finish some more projects projects before January 1st, but I'm gonna go with what I have today and show you that. So <clears throat> I also have a little bit of a cold or allergies or something, so forgive me for that. But I have a outline because this is probably the longest video I've ever recorded and I have put some time and thought into it and I'm really excited. So let's get started. So what I did is I went on to Ravelry and I used their feature to um, just filter down to the projects that I did in 2018. So I'm a really um, product focused knitter. Um, I haven't always been that way, but in the recent years I've become focused on like not leaving things lingering too long. If they're lingering and I don't like them, I'm gonna rip them out. Um, so I'm pretty good about keeping my projects, my whips down to a like less than 10 sort of amount. Um, and keeping them on Ravelry really helps me keep track of what I'm working on and how long it's taking me and if I need to wrap it up or rip it out. So I am pretty um, good at putting my projects on Ravelry. If you haven't done that, you won't be able to use this feature, but if you are interested, go to Ravelry, go to your projects page, and then you can click on, at the top, there's a drop down menu that says filter your projects. And let me see here. I've got my computer because I'm gonna be showing you some things later, but go to filter your projects and click on year completed in 2018. And then you can see which projects were just completed in 2018. So I'm gonna have um, a blog post that goes along with this video that will have all the projects that I completed in 2018 with links to the patterns if I used a pattern. So you can definitely go to that and I'll put the link to the blog post down below. It's also gonna have pictures of my favorite projects, but I'm gonna show you them here on video, which is even better. Um, and it'll also have like a little more details, like which, like how many of each category of things I knitted. I don't know, it's kind of fun to look back in numbers. So maybe you're not, um, maybe you're not a product, uh, I don't wanna say a productive knitter, a, pro a product focused knitter, maybe you're a process knitter and that's great. Um, but. For me, I like to look back and see what I did and look back if you would like, and you might be surprised by how much you did produce. So let's talk about numbers. So this year in total, again, it's December 29th. I could still finish something. <laughs> but right now on December 29th, 2018, I finished this year only 70 total projects, 18 pairs of socks, nine shawls, five cowls, five sweaters, five hats, eight dishcloths slash pot holders, three blankets, and 17 in what I'm gonna call the others category. So that's like bags, cozies. I even made some bras this year. I mean, just, you know, they all didn't need their own category. So I'm gonna go through each, I'm not gonna go through like all 18 pairs of socks that I made, that'll be on my blog. But I'm just gonna go through like socks, sweaters, cowls, shawls, and talk about my favorite one. So I might be looking at Ravelry just a little bit to make sure I get the yarns right, um, but I hope that you will enjoy seeing those projects. Oh, also, uh, 45 projects were knit and 25 projects were crocheted, 
which I was kind of surprised by how many projects were crocheted this year. Um, okay, so let's talk about favorites from each of those categories. Let's start with socks. So I knit 18 pairs of socks this year. That's like the most socks that I've ever made. Um, I started out doing um, one sock a month and then I started to, to design some sock patterns. So I started making like more than one pair a month. Um, and I also gave a lot of socks as gifts this year. So my favorite pair of socks that I made this year are the Clark socks. And I'm just gonna have to look up a picture because I gave the Clark socks away as a gift to my mom for Christmas. And she said that they were her favorite pair. Oh no, I've gone too far. So I'm just going to find, I'm going to filter by year completed 2018, and I'm going to see if I can show you a picture of the Clark socks. If it doesn't show up well on the screen, then I'm going to insert a picture. <clears throat> but the Clark socks are by Jocelyn, Jacelyn, Jacelyn Salem, and they were very popular, I think, two years ago. They've got a, ca a larger cable running down the front and a smaller cable running down the back. And I think what made them so fun is that even though they had cables, they weren't difficult to memorize. The designer was so smart, she put these little pearl bumps in that um, slant at a diagonal. And you knew that when you were on, I don't know, maybe it was like the second pearl bump in and the eighth or something like that, that you were gonna do a cable row. So it made it really easy to keep track. And I think that I might have to make another pair of these maybe, um, cause they just look really good with hand dyed um, speckle yarn. So those were my absolute favorite, but I didn't want to not be able to show you a pair of socks in person. So my second favorite pair of socks are these. And these are actually one of my own designs, my most recent one, and they're called Scraptastic Lux Socks. So I think that maybe I'm into cables for socks. These have actually a mock cable. It's just a twisted stitch. And they've got five colors, one, two, three, four, five, held with a strand of mohair. And these were just super easy. Like they look fancy, but they weren't hard. You can memorize them. It's a four row repeat. And they just make a fun, fuzzy pair of socks. So my favorite were the Clark socks, but these are my second favorite so that I had something to show you. Okay, now let's do shawls because I made nine shawls this year. It was definitely sock year plus shawls coming in second place. So my favorite shawl that I made this year is my most worn. And that, oh, I gotta reach for it, is the flat iron shawl. So I actually made two flat iron shawls by Tony Lipsy. And my first one, let me back up a little bit. My first one was this gradient color. So it goes from this like light blue to a darker blue gray. I think there's four colors in there. Yeah, four colors. Now this is not how the pattern was designed. It was actually, I'm gonna show you my second one, how the colors were supposed to go. And it's supposed to have a border. So I totally changed things. But this was a pack that I had from Yoth Yarn. And I think it was called Little, I don't know, doesn't matter that much, but it was it was a pack that I had a gradient pack. It like came on a stick. It was super cool. So that was my first flat iron shawl. This is a crocheted pattern and look how drapey it is. It's amazing. So I decided to make a second one. My second one, I followed the pattern exactly. And my second one is, there we go, this side, is a rainbow. <laughs> It's so crazy. I wear it all the time though. So I started out with this really fun like gray with little rainbows in it. It's got sparkle. And then I went to this really crazy one. And then I went to this super fun hot pink that also has sparkle. And now you can see the cute little edge that it has. So I know it's hard to see maybe up here. You can see that there are supposed to be alternating rows to kind of fade into that next color. This is a bigger flat iron shawl because I had more yarn. I had three skeins of fingering weight. And if you are a knitter that knows how to crochet, you will not find a faster way to get through three skeins of yarn. I mean, it still takes some time because it's fingering weight, but if you're a knitter and you're used to um, having to knit through like three skein shawls, 
you're gonna be blown away by how fast this is. I don't think I'm done making flat iron shawls. I just don't have any colors picked out right now, but flat iron shawl, my favorite of the nine shawls that I made this year. And there's a second one. Okay, what is next? Let's talk about cowls. Cowls did not get a lot of love this year. Um, I think because I'm really into shawls, I just think they're more, I don't know, flexible. It's like I can put them over my shoulders, but I did make three 54 cowls for Webster Street Knittery um, when I was test knitting it for her. Um, but my favorite one that I finished this year was on the needles for so long, and I was so glad to get it off the needles, and I love it. So it's my favorite. And I'm gonna have to look up exactly what this is called. I know it's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. So let me just find it real quick in my projects. Come on, internet. Okay. This pattern is called Gina's Brioche Hat and Cowl by Pearl Soho. So I changed it a little bit. <laughs> I don't think the original pattern was for fingering weight, but I use Madeline Tosh Merino Light. Um, the yellow is Edison Bulb. And this color here is called Holly Festival. H-O-L-I. So maybe I'm saying that wrong, but um, it's kind of blowing out there. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. So it's just a two color brioche. Um, I've got notes on my project page that says exactly how many I cast on, what needle size I used, but other than that, I followed the pattern. So it, it turned out pretty long, long enough that I can wrap it twice. Look at that hair, there we go. And it's just really comfy. And Madeline Tosh Merino Light is such a nice yarn. It just drapes super well. Um, so yeah, Gina's Brioche Hat and Cowl by Pearl Soho. And again, every single project that I made is on my project page in the year 2018 and is gonna be on a blog post with like the link right there that you can go to it. <clears throat> so that's my favorite cowl, more of an infinity scarf really. Um, but yeah, I really liked that one. Don't know if I'll make it again <laughs> just cause it took me so long, but it's really pretty. Okay, let's talk about hats. I made five hats this year, um, two of them I made twice, so that was four of the hats. And I think my favorite is this one. It's a very basic men's hat. You can see mine striping because of the yarn. Um, let me double check what it is, but you're gonna laugh at this pattern. The pattern is free. I did make some changes to it. <clears throat> the pattern is called two by two, ribbed for his pleasure. Yeah, two X, two, like two by two, ribbed for his pleasure. And it's a free pattern by Tink's Darker Side. I found it on Ravelry. Um, but this yarn that I used is was picked out by my husband on a yarn, we went on a yarn crawl, and he picked this Dreaming Color um, Smushy with Cashmere. And it's such a soft yarn. And the color is called Gray Tabby, which is why it's making those stripes, which is really cool. Um, so the pattern has four decreases, if you can see those spiraling. And I didn't, um, it was fine. Like I made my husband's hat this way, but I made a second one for my brother for Christmas. And I changed it to have um, five decreases. So it spiraled differently. So you can look for um, I think it's called Thomas's Ribbed Hat on my Ravelry project page to see how I changed this pattern. Um, but yeah, it's this one's sticking up on me because I, my head's not as big as my husband's, but it's just a really good basic men's hat. You can use a super nice skein of fingering weight yarn. You can let your husband or your boyfriend or your brother pick out something nice and make them this hat and it makes a great Christmas gift. So that's my favorite hat that I made this year. What do we have left? We have sweaters and other. I'm not gonna pick out, well, that's not true. Let me do this. So I made eight dishcloth and potholder projects this year. Um, each project on Ravelry had more than one dishcloth or potholder, but I didn't count those individually. So usually when I put up a project on Ravelry, like if I'm making two of something at one time, it'll just be one project. I won't make a project page 
for each different one. Now, if I'm making different, like I like to make um, dishcloths for wedding presents. And so I might make um, two of a special kind of dishcloth plus two plain ones, and those will each get their own project page because they have different patterns. Hopefully that makes sense. But I think I made like 16 total dishcloths and um, pot holders, but in eight different projects. <clears throat> so my favorite one has a really long name. And this is the one that I make for wedding gifts. We're going to a wedding soon and I'm gonna need to make some more. But they are called monogram, <laughs> Monogrammed Alphabet for Knitters, a collection of dishcloth patterns with letters from A to Z. So this pattern is a $16 pattern because it comes with 26 patterns, basically, 26 letters. So you get a whole pack um, you get the whole like PDF. Every letter has its own PDF. Really simple, really awesome. Or if you only want to get one letter, you can pay $2 it looks like. So let me go back to mine. Oh, this is by Heather Kate, by the way. So let's see. For my friends that got married, their last name was started with the letter A. So I looked on their wedding registry at what colors they had in um, like their kitchen supplies and bathroom, you know, people tend to lean towards a color. And then I pick out some sugar and cream that matches that and I make them these dishcloths. They are the best present ever. So I usually make, either I'll make um, the first initial of both of their names or I'll make the initial of their last name, their like married last name and make two of them. And then I'll make some like plain dishcloths, but that's definitely my favorite one. Okay, as far as sweaters go, I had a goal this year to finish six, and I'm gonna talk more about 2018 goals in a little bit, but I wanted to make six sweaters this year, and that didn't happen. I did make five. Granted, two were short sleeve, one was a baby sweater, so I didn't really meet my goal this year, but there's next year. My favorite one that I finished, I finished very early in the year, it was nearly done. <clears throat> And this one is called R. Reed. And I don't think I'm saying that right, so I better spell it for you. I know that it's A-U-R-E-E-D, R. Reed. And I'm gonna look up the designer's name because I don't recall what it is. R. Reed is by Meiju KP. I don't know. I've got it linked, don't worry. But it is, pro it is like my most, besides the Breezy Cardigan by I think Hannah Fettig, this is my second most worn cardigan. So it's, I know I made it out of Miss Babs in a uh, Katahdin, which is a BFL base. Um, and the color is called Half Past Midnight. But um, Miss Babs Katahdin is a fingering weight yarn, 100% blue face luster. And I like this for sweaters because it's lighter weight and it doesn't stretch out like superwash merino. So it's really good to, for me, it's really good for sweaters. But this is what the back of it looks like. It's so pretty. And this whole sweater was one skein of yarn. Actually, I'm gonna pause for a second because I wanna show you what one of these Miss Babs Katahdins looks like. Okay, I put the sweater on and I also grabbed the skeins. This <laughs> is Miss Babs Katahdin. Now, this skein of yarn is 76, or retails for $76 at the time when I bought it, but it has seven, I'm gonna mess this up, 1,750 yards of fingering weight. So that one's super pretty. I've got a second one in just gray because I know I can make a sweater out of this. So I have at least three sweaters out of Katahdin. Let me stand up and show you it real quick. Look at these things. I really like the fit of this being like mostly, it doesn't close all the way, it's got the angle, um, but I really like this sweater. And the lace on the back just made it fun, but let me rant about Miss Babs a little bit longer. When I see a neutral color that doesn't have too much variation in it, I just have to grab it because 1700 yards is four skeins of fingering weight yarn. So for $76, that's a great deal, I think. And it's hand dyed, and you know that you're gonna get um, 
some color consistency. So like for this one, I might be tempted to wind it into two and to um, alternate. But for like my blue, this blue sweater, you can see I've got some pulling in different spots. But I wouldn't do that with this. I would just keep carrying on. But little plug for Katahdin. It's a great way to stash sweaters quantities, but only have one skein of yarn. Um, the last thing that I go through, oh yes, the last thing is my kind of others category. So <clears throat> like I said, I knitted a bunch of like different things like bottle cozies and bras and I don't know what else I made. I made some bowls, some yarn bowls, but my absolute favorite thing that I made, and I think it's my favorite thing I made all year long is this. And it is my own pattern. So it's, I don't want to like <laughs> sound self-important here, but I have been looking for a bag that, or for some kind of system that I could put my color work projects in. Think like a Christmas stocking with eight different balls of yarn or like your favorite five color Stephen West shawl. Whenever I put my those projects into a drawstring, a drawstring bag where there was just like one space for them, they got so tangled. And so I had been looking for something that I could put a soft bag, not a hard container, but a soft bag that I could put those kinds of projects in and have all the balls of yarn stay separated and I couldn't find it. So I thought I will make it. So this bag is called the float tote and it's called float because um, when you're knitting and you're carrying your yarn across the back uh, with color work, you make floats. And this is the bag. And what's interesting is I have gotten the most compliments from people who don't knit or crochet on this project. Um, I have carried it at my place of work at school and somebody asked me, a teacher asked me to make one for them, which I said, I don't do that. Um, when I've been out in public, people have said, I really like that bag. Um, so that, that made me feel like I did something right, just on the aesthetic of it. But what makes it so functional, and I like to flip mine down like this, is this part on the inside. And I can actually take that part out and I can show you. So the bag itself is pretty basic. If you're a crocheter, like it's really easy to do, but then the part on the inside is what really makes a difference. So this is like a little removable tray thing. It's got some um, tabs on it. Of course it doesn't like stay or anything, but if you wanted to take out your yarn and plop it on the table without the bag, you could. So it's got these little crocheted buckets in it. And it's got a little slot, so if you have your um, bucket sitting on the table, the yarn can feed out this way. These are just the perfect size for a 100 gram fingering weight yarn cake, or if you like to hand wind your balls, they work really well. Um, I put these uh, magnetic fasteners on the bottom, and then it also fastens, you can see that they go through on the tray here, so then you can just magnetize it. So I have used this bag more than any other project this year because it's not, like I, I put all kinds of projects in here. I, when I made the um, Texture Time cowl by, or Texture Time shawl, uh, Mystery Knit Along with Stephen West, I was able to put all of my colors, each in their own little bucket, put my project on top, flip this up, and I could carry it around with me no problem. As soon as I got somewhere to sit, I could just set it down, un like fold this down, and all my yarn was already organized and ready to go. So this is my favorite from the others category of 2018 projects, but I think also my favorite project overall. This one is the large size and it's got five buckets or five different skeins of yarn. And then I also have a small, um, a small size, which right now I have my Christmas stocking and actually it's right here. Here's the small size. And it's got, so you can see I've got my project on top. Take that out and my yarn is already in there. I've got some other things in there, but my yarn is already in there all organized. I don't have to spend time untangling anything. So yeah, Float Tote is my favorite project of 2018 and it just happens to be my first paid pattern that I put on Ravelry. So I am um, pretty proud of it. Okay, 
let's go into some goals. <clears throat> let's make sure we're on track here. All right. I think 2018 was such a productive year because I did start out the year with a bunch of goals. I made this cute little sheet, which I'm going to go over in a second. I also made a 2018 make nine on Instagram and I made some private goals like on the app in my phone, just my list app. So let's talk about those goals and which ones I actually made. And then I'm going to go right into 2019 goals. So one of my goals was to knit two Christmas stockings in the summer. One, yes. Second one, on the needle still. <laughs> Another one was to start a granny stripe blanket, which I did do, and I'm gonna talk about it here in a minute. Um, one that I was successful at was to knit exclusively from Stash from January to March. Um, I participated in the Slay the Stash 2018 um, by Boston Jen. And she, uh, she does the Downseller Studio podcast, and she's going to continue that in 2019. You take a skein from your stash that's fresh, unopened. You declare it at, uh, before the first of the month, and then you have that whole month to knit it to its complete end. So I did that for several months, and I also didn't knit. Um, I think I did two projects that weren't from stash between January and March of last year. I bought some cotton to make wedding present dishcloths, and I bought some Karen one pound to make a blanket for charity for Be Hooked Crochet. So I feel like that was really good. I don't know if I'm gonna do that again this year because I didn't buy very much this year. Um, but yeah, knitting from stash is always a good thing. One thing that I failed at was to knit three patterns from books or magazines in my Ravelry library. But you know what I did do? I took all of my magazines to Goodwill. I did. I don't know if I'll regret that, but I did. Every single one. I also went through all my books and I only kept books that um, either I really loved the patterns or they were like technique books or stitch dictionaries. So I only have one small part of my bookshelf that has books anymore. So in a way, I may not have completed the goal, but I did work towards it. Um, participate in a mystery shawl knit along kit and all. So this year was my first time doing a mystery shawl knit along. I did Stephen West and I'll definitely do it again next year. It was so much fun. And I made the texture time shawl. I didn't buy a kit. Um, I, had, I had some perfect yarn for it and didn't really see a kit that I liked. So maybe next year I will buy the kit too. Um, knit six garments, hashtag year of the garment. Yeah, didn't happen, but I think it will this year, 2019, hopefully. Um, knit one Christmas present per, per month and finish all projects by November 30th, hashtag Grinch along. So this one I did pretty well. I think I knit a, I think I knit a Christmas present every month. And if I missed a month, I think I knit two the next month. And I did finish my gifts by November 30th, mostly because I decided what was finished by the 30th was it. And I wasn't gonna make anything else. And that was a little hard for me this year. It was a little hard to see people in my family open gifts that were made by me and then other people open gifts that were not made by me. Um, I don't know if I think it has to be fair but at the same time, there are some people who like knitted items more than others. Like my, some of my brothers, they're like, we don't want socks or hats or anything. So um, I think I like that one. I think I'm gonna keep that goal and try to just, once November 30th is there, that's it. I can, I can set aside a gift I was working on and do it for next year. Um, I think, that was it of my like public ones that I wrote on these knitting goals. Now let's talk about 2018 make nine. I couldn't even tell you what's on my 2018 make nine. I don't remember. I could go back and look at it, but I know that I made some things and I started some things and some things I never touched. So as far as for 2019, I'm not doing a make nine and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but the make nine thing, I was super motivated and then when it got to like August and I still had four sweaters on my make nine list, I was like, 
forget this. I am, I'm done with the make nine. I do like to see what other people are making. I think that's really fun. Um, but I did have a few more goals that I kind of kept privately because I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it. One, actually this is not really, some of them are goals and some of them are like, I keep a list on my phone called knitting dreams. And some of them are big dreams, like going to a big festival. And some of them are small dreams, like um, I want to create this type of project. So one of my dreams was to get an Ikea shelf, the kind with the squares and where you have, it's just like open and you put your yarn in. And that dream came true just a few months ago. We moved into a new house and this whole space downstairs is mine for yarn and other yarny things. So I got my Ikea shelf. So that was one that wasn't a goal for the year, but it was a dream. The other was to be a test knitter in 2018. And I got to do that luckily for a few different designers, um, for a couple knitting designers and for a crochet designer. So I felt really, really um, fortunate to get to do that. And I, I love test knitting. My second or my third thing that was a little bit of a secret, I didn't make it public, was to do box of socks. And I already said I knit 18 pairs of socks this year, so I definitely did one per month. And I think I'll keep that on. Um, my Another thing that I didn't even realize I put on my list was to knit socks, bed socks with mohair in them. And what's funny is I just designed a pair of socks with mohair, so I didn't even realize that was a goal I had and I had finished it. Now, two things that are still on my knitting dreams. One is to go to Rhinebeck. Come on, y'all. Of course, I want to go to Rhinebeck. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen. Probably not next year because it's it's too late, <laughs> I think, already to get a hotel room or an Airbnb for October in Rhinebeck, New York. But I never say never. I don't know. Um, and then another thing I'd really like to give a try this year, but I don't have any clear plans or projects, is steaking. Um, I am going to take a class in February at the or February, March. Um, at the Hill Country Retreat. And so I am I think that I'll get, no, now I can't remember. I'm signed up for classes at Hill Country and I'm also signed up for classes at DFW Fiberfest. So maybe it's Fiberfest in April that I'm taking steaking. But anyway, I'm gonna learn it this year. Even if it's not on a sweater, I'm gonna cut some knitting, okay? <laughs> so that was it for my 2018 goals. Um, <clears throat> I think those goals really drove some of my knitting this year and then really drove how my knitting is going to go in 2019. So 2019 is all about loose goals. That sounds awful, doesn't it? It's all about flexibility because um, knitting is creative and I don't want to be tied to a 2018 make nine. I don't want to be tied to the five sweater patterns I've had in my queue for three years and still haven't made them, even though I have the yarn. Um, and I think I was feeling tied to that this year. So I have some, I have some goals this year, but they're not so, they're not project specific. And um, I hope that lets me just feel like when that new Hohe pattern comes out, or that new Andrea Mowry pattern comes out, I can feel the freedom to cast it on right away because even though I bought this sweater yarn for something else, it doesn't matter. I can make that sweater at another time. I wanna be able to make what's current and what's exciting me at the moment. So my goals are as follows. I want to knit six sweaters this year, 2019. I have one already on the needles and that one definitely will count. Um, I would like to keep up again with the box of socks, knitting a pair of socks per month um, a lot of them might be Christmas gifts again, because that, that's how I got so many Christmas gifts done throughout the year. I have two design goals for this year. One is to design a sweater. I don't have any specific ideas for this sweater yet, except that it probably will be something pretty loose, um, because I'm a little nervous about making size adjustments. Um, and I don't know when that will be, probably in the fall. Um, my second design goal is to host a um, sock knit along. I am looking at the end of summer right now and I, I have a really fun idea. So I'm hoping that that will pan out, but that's it. If I have any other goals, I can make them, but 
I just want it to be, I just want to be able to knit what I want to knit when I'm feeling inspired by it. I don't want to get out of control with tons of whips, but I do want to have some freedom. So that's it for 2019 goals. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is my projects that I still have on the needles from 2018 that are going to roll with me into 2019. Um, I really like to kind of finish out the year on a clean slate as much as I can. Um, so I don't have, I'm looking at the pile down here at my feet, I think I've got one, two, three scrappy blankets that to me do not feel like they need to be finished anytime soon. So those don't really count. They may be a project on my Ravelry page, but I kind of scoot them into hibernation every once in a while. So I don't feel the need to work on them. And I've got one, two, three, four current whips. Um, one's a recent pair of socks that I feel like will be done very soon. One's a pair of socks that I knit on only at specific times. The other is a Christmas stocking that will be done soon and a shawl that I'm hoping to finish out. Oh, wait, five. I have a sweater too, <laughs> but all in all, that's not bad. So let me show you those projects and then we can wrap up this year in review. All right. So my 2018 projects that are coming with me into the new year are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. I feel like that's pretty good. Now I did definitely rip some projects this year. Um, not recently, but like kind of as I saw they were lingering, I got rid of them. But let me show you what's coming into next year. So I have a pair of socks that I just recently started. Um, these are out of Lolo Did It and her Helping Hippo colorway. They're so much fun. So this one is ready for ribbing. I just need to take some pictures of it so I can keep going because I'm using this sock for a tutorial. And then the second one I have done the toe. And so now it's ready to be taken anywhere I want to take it because it's just got foot knitting, straight foot knitting to go. So that's one project that I just started like a week ago, exactly a week ago. So I don't feel pressure to finish that um, by the end of the year. Um, but I do think that I will finish it soon just because I have some traveling coming up. There is a project that I would like to finish by the first, and I think I can do it. This is the Low Ray Me Shawl by um, Webster, Jen of Webster Street Knittery. And I am on the second to last color. So it's a really pretty like texture and garter and lace, um, simple, easy to memorize shawl, asymmetrical. And I am here in this is the last color I have before I do the border. So I'm getting pretty close, but of course my rows are getting long. Um, so I am using Suburban Stitcher in her, um, this was her birthday color. I don't think, this is not repeatable. I think she just dyed it live, but it's on a gold Stellina base and it's so fun. And I'm also using, I, I think it's a mini set from October House. So bunches of different colors. So that one would be really fun if I can get it finished by the first, since that's when the, that's when the pattern comes out. Um, I test knit this a while back for Jen of Webster Street Knittery, and she said we didn't have to finish it. And so I let it linger for a long time. But now that the pattern is coming out, I'm motivated to finish it. My other project I've shown so many times is my stocking. I finished my husband's stocking in the summer and then mine never even got started. So I am definitely halfway through the foot. Um, I've got another, I've got to finish this and another band of that. And then you can see, I'll put the heel in here and do the toe and then weave some ends in and this one will be done. I don't feel like I have to finish this by the first, but I do want to finish it before work starts back on January 7th. Um, this is a pair of socks here that I also don't feel any pressure to finish by the end of the year. Um, it is, they are my stars socks for the Dallas stars. And I just work on them when I go to stars games. I don't work on them any other time. The last time I was at the game, I knit the heel in. And so, you know, in the next game, I'll probably knit a good bit of the leg, but no pressure really to finish these. I'll just work on them throughout the season. The last project is a sweater that is high priority after I finish the shawl and the stocking. This project must be finished because it is my longest lingering whip besides the blankets. I'm gonna talk about those. They don't count. 
Okay, <laughs> this is the Canyon Cardigan by um, Devin Ventre. Oh, Devin, I don't know if I'm ever saying your name right. I think it's Ventre. Um, she's Nitty McCurley. She's got the cutest podcast. I love listening to her audio. She's now got a, um, yeah, that's right. She's now got a, a um, video podcast, but I'm working on the bottom portion of it. It is a giant oversized cardigan and it looks so cozy and I wanted to knit it and I wanted to wear it so bad and I just keep putting it off. I don't know why it's not hard. I knit other projects that are simple like this. I don't know, but I am determined once the new year starts and I've got those other whips off my needles, this baby is getting a lot of work on it. This is Suburban Stitcher yarn. I think it's her cinder colorway. I don't think I have a loose tag in there to look at, but I think that's right. I definitely have it marked on my project page, but that's my last one that's definitely gonna get finished up. It'll be my first completed sweater of 2019. Mark my words. Um, I'm just gonna show my scrappy blankets real fast because they don't really get a lot of attention on my feed or on my um, on my uh, Whip Wednesday videos that I've been doing this year. Um, I think because I kind of been putting them off. I haven't been a very good scrappy Sunday with the crazy sock lady. So tomorrow is Sunday. Maybe I can um, do a little scrappy Sunday knitting, uh, crocheting and knitting. But this one I have shown a lot. I've been making these little squares. This is, um, I have a recipe, a free pattern on Ravelry called Scrappy Granny. And they're the, these little scrappy granny squares. Um, but I have all these balls here left over from the squares because they only use like seven grams of yarn. So I can put those into my granny stripe blanket, which is right here. My granny stripe blanket I started towards the beginning of the year and it hasn't gotten a ton of love, but it's glorious. So I am either doing two rows or one whole row. I'm not doing magic knots on this one um, just because I like the way it looks to be striped all the way across. This is only half. It is very, very wide. Um, I've got details on my project page. It's probably at the very bottom because I do have this project hibernating since I'm not currently working on it. Um, I don't know, maybe that'll change. Maybe I'll work on it tomorrow. Ooh, got a fluff in my eye. And then the last um, scrappy project I'm working on is my Cozy Memories. Um, this one I'm not planning to make very big. I just want it to be like a little lap blanket. But yeah, it's really fun. I think these are pretty. They kind of hurt my hands to make them, I think, because I'm using such sharp needles. I'm using like, um, oh gosh, what is in my eye? I'm using uh, signature needles, metal needles for these. So I might need to switch to using wooden DPNs and that will make this project a little more pleasurable. But yeah, I'm not trying to get these done anytime soon. Um, once I start getting close on it, then I may be more motivated to finish, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is it. Those are my 2018 projects, my whips, my goals, my 2019 goals. And I hope to have so much more content for you this year. I am mega, mega excited about it and um, can't wait to show those things off. So um, make sure if you would like to keep up with all of my current projects that you find me on Instagram. I'm at Nitty Natty, K-N-I-T-T-Y. N-A-T-T-Y because my name is Natalie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it for right now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.